All right, we got two special things going today. First off, I finally got my hands on some Osage Orange, also known as Bodark, also known as Hedge. Uh, maybe there's one other term. I always grew up calling it Hedge or Osage Orange. Probably Hedge, what I grew, what I knew it as. Then I learned it as Osage Orange. Then I moved down to the Gulf Coast and I learned it as Bodark, which is technically Beau de Arc. Uh, which is a French term for wood of the bow. Anyway, super heavy wood, super hard wood. Now this one was fresh cut, um, but I love this wood so much. It's, when you cut it fresh, it's like this neon orangish yellow green. And then as it dries and cures, it'll dry down more to kind of a tannish orange like this, um, but with a much higher gloss on it so again super hard super durable wood when i was growing up in missouri we cut it for fence posts no need to heat treat pressure treat nothing you just cut it off stuff it in the ground and it <laughs> lasts forever we'd get to where the fence posts would finally start to get rotten out and then we'd pull them and cut them for firewood because there was still plenty of good meat inside of them Anyway, got the hedge, super excited about that. Also gonna be testing out some Cook's saw blades. I'm finally stepping up my saw blade game. This is a Cook's uh, Duratooth Super Sharp. I gotta grease my, my wheels here, but um, this is the first I'm running on, you know, something that I guess people would say is a better blade. I've been running just the basic consumer grade wood misers, Timber Kings, you know, El Cheapos basically. And to be honest with you, this Cooks is not a whole lot more expensive. It was, uh, I think it was like $22 a blade and I was paying 17 to 18 a blade for the other ones. So really not that much more expensive. I really hope it keeps this blue color. I don't know if it will or not, or if that's just a coating, but if it keeps that blue color, that would be awesome because it would help me distinguish it from the blades, the other blades. The one thing I'm noticing though right away is the tooth spacing. So these are, let's see here, seven eighths, seven eighths of an inch on the tooth spacing there. I'm looking from one to two, seven eighths of an inch on the tooth spacing. So more than one tooth per inch. And on these consumer, these, these blades, let's see what they are. Oh, they're also seven eighths. Those are seven eighths. If you guys can see that. Um, yeah, seven eighths. So no more teeth per inch. It looked like more from a distance, but anyway, we shall see. Uh, I've heard really, really good things about the Cook's saw blades. Um, two things inspired me. One, I was down at the local commercial mill talking to that guy. He runs a wood miser, but he runs Cook saw blades. And I'm sitting there watching that wood miser just march right through oak like there's nothing to it. Um, and then the other thing was I just got on the Timber King forum and I just said, hey, you know, looking to get something better than than the general general old crap what do you guys say and there was quite a few votes in favor of cooks so we're gonna give the cooks a try like i said if it keeps the blue color cool if not i'm gonna have to just keep them sorted because i, I do want to make sure i know which one i'm putting on i want to reserve these cooks if they work like i'm like i think i want to reserve them for my harder hardwoods you know my pecan it's kind of funny i bought them to do pecan uh and then just happened to get this osage orange in at the same time but this big guy, I think we're gonna clear it just fine. I gotta get it washed up and uh, get the mill warming up and then we'll take a whack at it and see what happens.
Tell you that blade is darn sure running right through it so far. Oh, that's nice. I mean, granted, a brand new consumer blade might have done the same thing, but you get it washed up. Okay, so you see the neon green fades pretty quickly, but I love that. It's like just, it's just, it's something, it's just not even real. It's so bright. It's amazing. Um, so this is, you see it looks kind of orange now. That's more the color that it's going to cure down to. So that, that lime, that super bright, vivid green or yellow, whatever you want to call it, is just while you're cutting fresh um, and then it fades but I still I love that orange color that it fades too so this piece here obviously this is where it was starting to break off so each piece I'm pulling off they're kind of cracking in half we're not going to get a lot of great big pieces but again this is just a, a not split anyway now I don't know if this was well this should have been the bottom so that's solid-ish in the log now up here We've got this vertical split in the middle of the log. Uh, so I don't know how pervasive that is. But we're gonna get down through this a little more. Hopefully I can get down to where I've got a flat spot. This edge right here is wanting to catch. I may take my chainsaw and shave just a little bit off of there. Um, Cause I wanna take the whole log down here, get this flat and then we'll roll it over. And you can see when we roll it, we've got another branch that'll be sticking up there. I'll we'll have to shave a little bit more off of that before we get it decently squared up. But ultimately, we're just going to slab this thing out. I've just got to get a flat side on it uh, so I can roll it over and have a good reference, and then we'll slab it down. So let me take chainsaw. I'll trim this here just a little bit, and um, then we'll take a few more of those four-quarter cookies until we get down to where we got a flat top, and then we'll switch over to eight-quarter. Oh, goodness. Just had to give you guys a little intermission here, show you just the sheer beauty. <laughs> I love this tree. You can see it's starting to want to crack. So here, here's where that crack was at on the end. And you can see it's kind of trying to move all the way up like it's the pith, but it's not continuous. It, it's little splits here and there. It's almost like it's relief cracks that happened over time. You know, I guess the tree was in a windy environment or something like that, it could be. So um, actually a really cool effect. <laughs> you know, you take something like this and, and slab it. Um, yeah, I, I would think you take something like this and slab it and just use a black epoxy to fill in those cracks. It's just absolutely amazing. Okay, well, I got the first little, uh, we're going six quarters on this. I'm gonna do a few more six quarter. We're gonna try to get some 12 quarter and some eight quarter out of them. Um, I've got this log, one that's a little bit smaller and one that's a little bit bigger. So I'll probably try to get the 12 quarter out of the big one. Um, and again, not a ton, but I don't know, hard to say. I'm, I'm set on six quarter now. If I can find a, a stop point where my, if I can find where my six quarter and my eight quarter kind of line up, maybe like right there, somewhere right there, we could get a six quarter and then get two eight quarters below it or three eight quarters below it. Maybe do something like that just to, you know, the one will be a hair under. No, I guess it'd be a hair over eight quarters, so that'd be fine. So like I said, that's, that's all I'm looking at. I'm just trying to take it down per the scale and not have to, I don't want to have to take off a little shave cut just to get to change what thickness I'm doing. So anywho, beautiful stuff. I love it.